Welcome to Pub Talk, the unofficial official craft beer podcast of Oklahoma, where we're all about the three B's, beer buddies, and bullshit. I'm Michael, and with me, as always, is a man who can't wait to tell the COVID good riddance, but until then, he'll Skype to all you cool cats and kittens, Jeremy. Hey, yo. On today's show, we're back again with another social distancing Skype show, this time to chat with Mitch from Rapture Brewing. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button wherever you're listening. And show us some love on social media at Pub Talk Podcast. All right, let's get in the first round. You know, they brew 10,000 bottles of beer a day. I drink 45 off the assembly line, and I'm the asshole. So, what are you drinking? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I am drinking. I've got a, another can of it sitting here that's sweating. Uh, All American Denim from Welltown Brewing. Uh it's a Hellas Lager, four percent alcohol by volume. Um, says it's crisp, refreshing, with all American roots. I, you know, I can't speak to the roots, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's crisp and refreshing. Yeah, I enjoy it. I, you know, sometimes I get a, a bad rap, uh, deservedly and undeservedly sometimes, and. I enjoy this beer. Uh, I enjoy their their berry bliss or whatever the sour. Um, anyway, yeah, I like this one. Um, I'd, I'd kill a lot of these if it was hot outside. What'd you rate it? Uh, you know, it's right in the middle for me. It's um, I'd say three point one nine. Right on. Uh, I. I am drinking a beer from Rapture Brewing. They're chrome yellow. Uh, it's a mixed culture saison, or saison, however you want to say it. Um, chrome yellow is apparently the first novel by Aldous Huxley, published in 1921. Good info. Right on. I think it's 5.5, yeah, 5.5 ABV. Yeah. It's good. Good, light, easy drinking beer. I we both pick light, easy drinking beers. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have much else to say than that. I mean, it's easy to put down. I like that it's five point five, especially with how some of these episodes have gone. Um, <laughs> Let's see if we can get through this one without getting shit canned, right? <laughs> Here's hoping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother crossing anything. It'll happen. Uh, yeah, it's it's good, good shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, three, four, five. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just say, uh, I was going to drink a Rapture beer before the Rapture beer we're going to drink once Mitch is on. Um, but then I drank them all over the weekend. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he was doing, he did, he did, was doing delivery on Friday and I bought like nine or 10 beers. Yeah. They gone. That'll happen. Yeah. Did he have the end of the night one? A Schwartz beer? Mm -hmm. One of them? Did you get that one? Uh, that was the first one I drank, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good shit. Yep. So, what's been going on? We're still trapped. Or <laughs> we're safe at home, people. Yeah. Um, you you know, I, I'll just say I've been out of the house for about 45 minutes in the last two weeks. And that was to drop some beer on your doorstep. And, uh, there were a ton of motherfuckers on the road. Oh yeah. Everywhere. And it was early on a Saturday morning and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go there. Literally set this on the front porch and go the fuck home. So that I'm not part of the problem. And unless everybody else was doing the same thing, they weren't. Jesus Christ, there was a line out the door when I drove by Walmart on my way home. Uh, there was a line wrapped around the corner at uh, IHOP and shit, and it's just... It's good to hear Never that. Happened. That Walmart's actually, like, has a line going in, because I've seen a lot of places, I guess, they're, they're, I guess they were supposed to start limiting how many people can go in, into Walmart. And there was, like, 30 people at a time or something. But kept seeing everywhere that just wasn't happening. Like they were oh. setting up the distances outside to, I guess, make it look like they were doing it, or maybe they tried to in the beginning, and then they're just like, 
fuck it, come on in, because it's not worth it to them at that point. <laughs> but, yeah, it's fucking nuts, man. Every day it's just like, what the fuck's going to happen today? What can't we do yeah. now? What what just happened now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, fucking nuts. I don't know. I... I... <sighs> It's like, it's like I keep telling, because, you know, I've got, like, my dad and some other people that kind of call on me almost every day these days, because it's like, everybody's kind of checking on each other, and it's also just like, I need some contact with another human, and, you know, it's at a certain point, it's like, what the fuck do you say? Huh? What have you been up to? Well, I walked from my bed to my spare bedroom that's an office so that I could work. I did that for eight or nine hours. Then I walked another 20 feet to the couch where I remained until I went back to bed. Woo! Good times. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to do. Just a lot of binging TV and shit. And looking out the window. Yeah. Now, I will say, uh, yesterday, I took a break from those two spots in the house, or three spots in the house. Uh, watched a little Facebook Live out on the back patio. Some Brandon Clark. Uh, he's doing his normal Mercury Lounge Sunday service from his house uh, via Facebook um, live. That was cool. You know, uh, if you know us personally or if you've listened to the show for a long time, you know how much we love that motherfucker and used to go out to his shows all the time. Um, man, brought some memories back and it's probably the reason I drank about the last four beers I had yesterday, but, you know. Oh, that's awesome. That was a lot of cool shit being streamed yesterday. I forgot all about that one. Um, I did watch Kevin Smith live, though. He's doing his Hollywood Babylon thing live. Where is he? I guess, like, on their back porch or something. Him and Ralph are, like, sitting six feet apart, gloves and shit. Doing their little skits. Pretty much doing the same thing. Not having a whole lot to fucking talk about. So they just talk about yeah. what the, they're watching, what movies they're watching and shit. Or I canceled or postponed. <laughs> you know, it's... Not a lot. I think it was only like 40 something minutes and those things are normally fucking two three hours easy yep yep yeah it's just weird i you know i don't know <laughs> it'll change soon maybe maybe hopefully i don't know it depends on who you watch uh it depends on who's talking about it because it's either uh you know sometime in may well this will all be good or it's gonna carry into next year that would be fucking nuts. Be so crazy. I don't know if my mental health can handle that. Yeah, man. Yeah, people in the house are starting to, starting to, about to snap. First one's probably gonna be my daughter. She's fucking going crazy. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't fucking get. It. Uh, I fucking get it. But it's like, man, how how much longer? You just gotta stay. You can't go. You can't go. Yeah. No, it's. It's happening in the house here too. It's it's I see it, uh, you know, and like our instant messages and stuff at work. Uh, everybody is wound tight. Hell, you can see it in Facebook groups and stuff. Yeah. Everybody's just a little bit snippier than they already were. And on the internet, whew, that's impressive. And yeah, that fucking just real quick, that quarantine beer chugs group. <laughs> yeah. Was shotgunning a thing that you did back in the day before, like we started hanging out. I've never been a big shotgunning a beer person. I've done it. It was never my go-to. I mean, I was, as you know, I was a beer bong guy or just straight open the motherfucker and chug it. Yeah, it's a bunch of that shit on there. People fucking it up, of course. I was like, man, if I tried to do it the first time, I'd probably fuck it up. But a lot of examples of what not to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, the trick is to cut the hole in the side with the hole facing up. Yeah. Then you turn it as you're opening. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that group is full of rocket scientists. All right, so time to bring on our guest. I guess here's Mitch. Don't know what to say there. It's okay. No one does. No one knows anything. Yeah. We're in weird times. Yeah. So, um, Mitch, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, if you want to take just a few seconds to introduce yourselves to who, everyone listening, if they maybe missed the episode you were on. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Mitch Hull. I'm the co-owner and head brewer at Rapture Brewing. Uh, we operate on a 80-acre farm in Kellyville, Oklahoma. We currently 
source meat and eggs to restaurants when they're open. Um, <laughs> and we also sell to people around town. Um, like we do free delivery service. So right now that's clutch. Um, we also do pickups at the farm on Mondays and like for all your meat or eggs. And we also started sourcing from other local farms as well to help them, um, you know, go survive through this crazy time. So we've, we've even got honey from Rourke Acres Honey, which is like my favorite local honey I've had. Um, some, I think it's there, uh, it's called the Swan Brothers or maybe that's a band. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, but they do dairy. So we have milk and cheese from them. It's really good. And a bunch of other stuff. So, oh, and uh, Dale and Daughter, they do a bunch of fer- fermented foods like sauerkraut. We've got hot sauces, uh, pickles. Like, they're just amazing. I really want to collab with them and do some crazy sauerkraut beer, like use their lactobacillus. <laughs> be so insane. Um, eventually. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much it, and now I'm just kind of living, yeah, living that Corona day, <laughs> aren't we all? Yeah. Well, so I guess before we get too far into it, um, you dropped off a beer uh, last week for us to try while we were doing the show. Yes. Um, so what do we got here? Uh, I'm pouring it right now. So. Okay, great. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bottle. So I can drink with you guys, and I'm gonna struggle with the cork. These, so I ordered these bottles and these corks from this like amazing company, and they source a lot of um, local re- uh, restaurants, a lot of breweries with their bottles and corks or caps or whatever. Yeah. But man, I feel like they sent me some bottles and and corks that just I get real tight. Yeah, this shit's tight. <laughs> I do not want to come out. See, I'm a professional. I don't want to brag, but look at that. Oh, boom. Uh, Dominated. Bullshit! I broke mine off <laughs> and had to get a corkscrew. <laughs> yeah, that happens. It yeah, happens. Able to do it on camera. Yeah, hey, look at that. Throws out first. <laughs> That's quite the head on there. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Damn, that smells really fucking good. Yeah, dude, this beer is crazy. So I'll I'll talk about this one. Um, this is a special beer. It might be a little bit of a downer to start off, but at the same time, it'll be okay. Um, so this was a beer we I love to do saisons. That's like my favorite style that we do at Rapture. Um, and so this is a beer we ha- I had a partner, and I don't know if you guys met Peter at the farm. Do you remember? He's a big dude, red beard, red hair, always wear a hat. I, yeah, I think you. I think he was. I in, think so. I'm yeah. pretty sure. The room we went into. Yeah, because he there. he's like always there. I think I met him at McNelly's too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, if you watch the What the Ale video that Tom uh, Gilbert did whenever we did our launch party, you'll see Peter, he's like creeping in the background like while I'm doing my serious interview. Um, but, so Peter uh, was a uh, partner at the farm, and he actually passed away in October. Um, so this was the, uh, the last beer that I brewed that he was alive for, um, and this is a beer that he's He's always he always wanted me to brew this type of beer, like a because I love sessionable saison. Like if I could brew, you know, three and a half percent saison for every single beer, that's what I would do. Like that's what I want to do. But he'd always be like, "Dude, you gotta do a big saison." Like oh, I'm talking eight percent, ten percent. I was like, "All right, fine, whatever, we'll do it." Um, so that was the last beer. So this is an eight and a half percent saison. Um, it's got rye and uh, dark wheat in there uh and like obviously pilsner uh mall is the base but and then it's our house yeast culture so yeah yeah it smells, it's pretty so good. Yeah, it smells crazy right yeah. yeah cheers guys i haven't had this in a bit yeah it's a cool beer cheers. yeah cheers it's good so yeah, this is going to be our next um release um you know we kind of do different types of releases because we don't have a tap room at the farm. So um, typically we'll just, I'm buddies with the Ranch Acre people. And so I'll talk to them um, and I'm buddies with Ian at Beer Garden. And so we'll pretty much mainly do our releases through liquor stores. Um, And then we just got into Collins Midtown Liquor. 
Um, so Ranch Acres and Midtown Liquor, I, I've lived near them, and then uh, so that's always easy for me to deliver beer there. Um, but I think for this, for Peter, it's called Peter, the beer. Um, and also it's like a nice amber. There was a pea on the cap. Ginger. Yes, yes. <laughs> a nice red ginger color uh, for him that just worked out perfectly. But, uh, but yeah, so this one will actually, the plan is to release it at the farm. And we'll have other bottles um, that you can buy on site as well. And we're hoping, this is spoilers for what I was going to talk about later, but um, we're going to start canning as well, like six packs. Awesome. So I think, yeah, it just goes with the farm. I mean, because I, I love doing Saison, so we'll always do Saison bottles. Um, and I think we'll do a lot of lagers and stuff in cans and IPAs. <laughs> and some stouts, maybe. Ooh. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, just a side note we were talking before you joined the show about hey maybe this will be the first one that we don't get kind of drunk on since we started doing these skype shows well. Ancient, <laughs> large bottle <laughs> wrong <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> okay. yeah i haven't like drank at all today so this is this is hitting the spot oh yeah yeah i had so i was i was this is a peek behind the curtain for the listeners I was telling Jeremy and Michael that I just came back from um, filling up some crowlers for somebody who's doing a uh, pickup at the farm. So if you want to do that, just shoot me a text, find our social media, uh, because if you buy meat, um, we'll let you also pick up beer. Um, so I was filling some crowlers. So I did have, I tried a little sip because I had to, obviously, to make sure it was still tasting okay, of the cherry salt. Uh, so good. Yeah. I was like, I'm on the farm. I got to drink a nice light fruited sour obviously yeah i crushed a crawler of that yesterday yeah yeah thank you for the shout on instagram I yeah that up a story with a quickness what do you think of that colch that's like so with um uh, with how coronavirus has been and you know this is going to date the podcast but we're just going to do it anyways yeah um, I mean, this, this is a podcast at home, so it's already dated. But um, right. so I had brewed that beer pretty much specifically for a bar in town because all we really do is distribute kegs. Um, so this was a bar that has been running through um, our Kolsch. And I was like, and it's called the Whittier Bar. Awesome bar. Um, great music. Uh, it's in the Whittier, uh, Kendall Whittier area. So it's like really close to Heirloom. And they just go through their Kolsch like crazy. And they really only have um, like three or four beers on tap. They always have Guinness on. And they have an Heirloom beer on. And uh, they have a Rapture beer on. And then they rotate the other one. Sometimes it's American Solera. Um, sometimes it's another local. Uh, so their, their beer list is, for having four taps, it's pretty awesome. Um, and like our really small kegs. Um, and I pretty much brewed that new batch of Kolsch for them. It was using a new yeast. I tweaked the recipe a little bit and I love it. I absolutely love it. And so I was bummed because I want that beer to be fresh for people to try and I'm running out of crowlers. Mm. So you got one of the, <laughs> one of the small run of crowlers. So yeah, I hadn't had that one before. It was good, man. Mm. That was another one I crossed yesterday. Oh just, yeah. Just had me a nice session day and you know, I put down. Those two and uh, chrome yellow and I think I did the uh, Cesar or whatever yesterday too. Yeah, uh, yeah. That so that beer, I love that beer. That's that's one of my favorite beers that we brew. Um, I say we brew that I brew. Um, so nobody knows how to pronounce it, and I'm not trying to call you out. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> so it's actually pronounced Chesare. Uh, which makes me feel really pretentious whenever people are like, oh, I'll do the Cesar. I'm like, yeah, chess on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, that's what it's called. But now I've just started calling it Cesar because I feel like it's, it's easier to just talk about it that way. Or I just say our spelt Cezanne because that's what that beer is. It's a spelt Cezanne. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I just went for it. I was, I, dude, I, I love it. It's an accent mark on it and everything. I should have. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Kind of piece of shit am I? <sighs> oh no, no, dude. That's why I, I corrected you in love. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, 
so I guess we've talked about the the farm and everything a little bit already. Um, when we had you on back, I think that was August last year. Um, you were kind of in the very beginning stages of taproom planning. Has that gotten any further or? Yeah, man, it's really tough. Um, you know, we, we have, we have, we have had, had, have, you know, whatever you want to say plans for out there. Um, but it's never really gotten past the planning stages. And so we were trying to figure out like, you know, how can we, how can we kind of like speed things up a bit? Uh, yeah. Because doing it at the farm, it's, it's quite the undertaking. Uh, I didn't think it'd be as big of an undertaking as it is. Um, so I'm glad we at least have our brewery out there. And I talked to Abel and they said we can do beer releases. So that's cool um, that we can like have people buy bottles and stuff like that. So that'll help out. Um, but we, we honestly got to the point where we were like, you know, let's start, let's start looking in downtown Tulsa and see if, if we should open up a spot there. So um, a couple of months ago, I started looking at some places and we had a lead. So um, our, you know, one of our themes, I don't, if, if you guys haven't seen our, I know you guys have, but if the listeners haven't seen our like theming, it's, it's all like 20s. So I love like speakeasy vibes. You know, I love like jazz. Like I listen to jazz all the time. Um, so we were like, okay, let's get a spot and make like a speakeasy downtown. Like you can't really do a speakeasy. I mean, you can, there are like similar things, but um, we're like, let's, let's do something like that. And so we found a spot and we were going to do something really, really unique and really cool. Super stoked on it. And then the people that own the building said, well, we just got word that we actually can't do that. And I was like, oh, God, you're ruining my life. But you know what? We're just going to take that and be like, you know, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. We're going to find another spot or maybe it's just pushing us more to just going for it at the farm, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of interesting for us, like, I'm, I'm really interested to see how this release with, with the Peter Beer goes, um, having people come out to the farm and see. I know you guys have been out there, but, you know, the only people that really go out there are people that are wanting to check out the farm for the, the meat, like Prairie Creek Farms, you know what I mean? Um, see the animals and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to try and, and, uh, and see if people will be down to drive, you know, 25 minutes outside of Tulsa, you know, because my, my original dream was to be like the Jester King, you know, of Austin or of Tulsa. Um, cause like I went to Jester King for my bachelor party. I don't know if I talked about that on the last podcast, but I don't know if it made the show, but we've definitely talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, that was always my dream is to like, cause Jester King has always been one of my favorite breweries. Um, and so I, and whenever I went there for my bachelor party, I was like, this is the most amazing thing. Like come out, just hang out all day and just chill. Like, that's what I want to do, you know? And so that's, that was the very beginning of Rapture. That was our plan. And then it just like, it's a, it's a pain. It's a pain to like get all the stuff going out there on a farm. Like it's way more stuff than I would ever even have imagined, you know, like with plumbing and stuff. Oh, dude. Cause like if you're buying a building in or leasing a build, a spot in Tulsa, it's like, well, yeah, they have plumbing. Right. And so getting <laughs> plumbing out in the middle of a farm, it's, it's quite the undertaking. And our road is also a gravel road, like out to the farm. That kind of gets tough, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So I'm I'm just curious because I remember having this thought when we came out there before. Is the farm, generally speaking, open to the public where people can just like it check it out? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we okay. kind of like to get a heads up just so – I mean, there's always people out there. But, you know, the farm – I mean, it's a fully functioning, operating farm. So it's just good to have a heads up because, you know, there's dangerous equipment out there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of animals are just roaming around because we basically give animals free reign uh, for the most part. Like we've, we've got 80 acres and the pigs go all over those 80 acres. We have cows, we have chickens, um, we have a goat, um, a couple dogs, some cats. So, I mean, we got animals out there. So it's, it's nice to get a heads up. But, yeah, it's, it's open. We want to keep – as open a relationship as possible with um, with people that are coming out, so they know 
Like we're, we're really upfront with how we operate. You know, like we, we're free range, everything, everything, non GMO, you know, organic, whatever you want to call it. Like we're, we're it. Right on. Well, you mentioned the goat. So how's porch dealing with the pandemic? You know, he's doing okay. He hasn't caught the coronavirus yet. Right. On. Um, I say yet, hopefully he never does. You know, Tiger got it. I, I heard about that. What is that about? Right. That's insane. So we're trying to keep Porch as safe as possible. We're making him wear a mask and gloves, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Staying safe. Well, especially since he just lets himself in to play. Oh, I know. Yeah, you know? he just walks in. <laughs> he, he, every single time I'm brewing, it, he can smell the spent grains. And so he'll just start like banging on the door. I'm like, dude, I hear you. They're coming. Relax. <laughs> I'll take care of you, Porch. Jeez. <clears throat> well, so we mentioned the the virus, the corona, right. the c yeah. word, whatever you want to yeah. call it. Yeah. Um, what's the best way to support Rapture during all this craziness? Dude, the, it, ways? the best way to support Rapture, um, it's tough. So, I would say hit us up for deliveries. Um, buy bottles from us because we're running out of crowlers. I've been talking to like some, you know canning suppliers and it there's a massive shortage in the united states maybe probably in the world i would say but mainly in the united states um because every brewery is filling crawlers now because that's the only way they can make money um so i would say like if you if you feel like supporting us um go to the liquor stores that have us go to your local liquor store and request us um because that's really the only way that we can get to you is if we do home deliveries which I don't know if we're going to continue that that much longer. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. Like I kind of want to talk to you guys about it. How do you feel about like the home delivery stuff? Because it's kind of getting a weird vibe now. Yeah. yeah especially with like it's having to pay at home. You have to pay there at the yeah the source right the six feet. I don't know. Yeah. No. It's nice to have that option. I mean, right. But I love it. I mean, I think it's awesome. I just I, I I know that there's a couple breweries in town that are like we don't want to you know put our employees in that situation anymore you know it's yeah because you're putting them out on the road you're right where they have to interact with someone touching whatever they're paying with and right all that stuff because you know even the other other night when I got the delivery from you I. I, I know you, I trust you and all that stuff, but it still felt kind of weird to like, we're both touching the, the phone to do the, the sale. Right, exactly, that stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah I know. That's part of like the law and stuff, right? You have, you can't prepay. Yeah. Right? You, it's an able law. Yeah. yeah. So a lot yeah. of people probably don't know that you have to, you have to do it at, at your home and it, it's a little weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so like whenever, yeah. Oh yeah. What were we going to say? Hey, you know, problem solved. Yeah, prepay but, would be so easy. Um, and that's the thing, like whenever I get a phone call, um, I like let them know, like, I will be here in this window and you have to be there because I have to see your ID and you have to pay whenever I'm delivering the goods. Yeah. So I, I wish it was a prepay, but you know, with Able, you just don't know. You don't know. Uh, We're lucky we got delivery. Yeah. What they've been doing. So yeah. Far. Oh yeah. yeah. And I know that it's just getting even crazier and crazier because I was wanting to be able to do deliveries with our farm products because I've helped them with deliveries. And there was one day they had like one post because I'm not necessarily a partner in the farm, but the farm is a partner with the brewery. Um, but I help them out as much as I can, you know, if yeah. I have free time. And so w randomly one day, one of their posts went like semi locally viral and they got 200 deliveries in one day. Oh. And so they were stressing out. And this was around the time that um, Abel said that we can do, you know, deliveries for beer. And so I was calling them and I was like, yo, can I, you know, put our beer on the website and have people like request it, not pay through the website, but request it. And then I could do the farm delivery and the beer delivery at the same time. But, I mean, they're swamped right now, and I, I have not heard back. I've tried to contact them multiple times, and it's just not happening. Because I also tried to do that before they made that law, you know, put that law into place. 
um, to see if that was possible. And they said, no, it's not possible. I wish they would have given me a heads up. Like it's coming down the pike, but you know, whatever. I'm not going to ask for special treatment, even though I have a one barrel brewery in <laughs> Kellyville, Oklahoma. Come on. We're big time. Right. That's right. But yeah, I don't know. I want to try and do those deliveries as much as possible. So, yeah, if, if you want to try our stuff, um, hit me up on Instagram. Um, I have my phone number on there. Text or call. Um, I take calls up until 2 o'clock on Friday, and then I will deliver on Friday. So, And I think I have, like, I probably have 15 or 20 crawlers remaining, maybe less. I need to count, but... I'll probably end up counting on um, maybe tomorrow. I should have counted while I was out there today, but I just didn't. I was too lazy. <laughs> Switching up a little bit, do you have any uh, go-to quarantine beers? Oh, man, yeah. Um, my go-to quarantine beers have been Chrome Yellow, obviously. Got to support the brand. Are you drinking yeah. Chrome Yellow right now, Michael? <laughs> this one. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I love that beer, dude. And whenever it's really hot outside, it's the most crushable beer. Um, so that, I love that one. Uh, but for beers that are not my own, I've been crushing that heirloom um, uh, oak fermented lager. Um, I can't remember what it's even called. I bought like a case of those cans, maybe even more. Um, yeah, it's like this like oak, oak age pills that um, they modeled it, or it's like a love letter to um, uh, Pilsner Raquel, and that beer is so good. Um, so I've been crushing a lot of those. That's like a nightly drinker for me, and I uh, have been killing some Le Petit Prince by uh, Jester King. I love that beer, and it's like 2.9%. See, that's the that's my that's my thing right there. I can drink that all day. <laughs> Smart. Don't go for the stouts. The yeah, dude. Stouts. <laughs> I, I did have a buddy come over the other day, and I so I'm a member of the American Slurry Society. I've been since like day one, and uh, we also we did Prairie Dogs um, last the last two years. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it this year just because money's tight. You know, it's it's tough. It's tough to like do those memberships because they're so expensive. But anyways, I've been sitting on so many stouts, and I and I don't really drink stouts alone. Um, so I my buddy came over, and I was like, "Dude, we got it. We got to crush some of these prairie stouts because I'm just sitting on them at this point." And so we had we had quite a few, um, and they're delicious. I mean, they're like, I mean, they're the pastry stouts that um, everybody's loving right now, and they, and they were delicious. But I wouldn't really say they're my go-to quarantine beers, just because. I mean, you guys, you guys know my style, so I'm yeah. more, I'm more of like a lighter saison, uh, lager type dude. But also IPAs. I'm just gonna name every single beer style I like from my quarantine <laughs> beers. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I didn't hear red ale or <laughs> love the ambers. Um, just you know, all of it, all of it. The Schwartz beer. Hey now. I actually have a collar that's sitting in my in my fridge right now that I need to pop open eventually. So good. Yeah. I love that beer, man. Yeah. You know, it's funny you're talking about the, the membership beers and stuff, and I, I should have said this in the first round, but uh I I usually keep like a cellar, right? Oh, yeah. Of stouts and stuff like that, um, that I'd say for beer shares or whatever else. All of them shits are in my fridge now because it's the oh, end of the yeah. world. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm the same way. I was like, that's why my, when my buddy came over, I was like, dude, we are crushing these because I'm not sitting on them any longer. Yeah. Like, we got to do it. Because, I, I mean, I have I have prairie beer. So I started drinking prairie beers. Oh, man. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, started drinking prairie beers like, I don't know, my first – I think I talked about this in the last podcast. My first experience with prairie was the wine, wine barrel noir. Um, and it was in like the 750 milliliter cork and cage bottles. And so I've been drinking Prairie like since then. And I love like Noir back then too. But um, so I'm just sitting on so many different years of like Pirate Bomb and Barrel Age Bomb and all those, dude. Like all the Noirs, 
I have so many. Like, I need you guys to come over to my house so we can go through my cellar because I just have cases of prairie beer. And my wife is always like, we, you got to get rid of them or you got to do something. I was like, I'm not going to get rid of them. I have to drink them. <laughs> it's sitting right. on them for this long. Come on. Um, so, yeah. Just tape so, off six foot sections in your house and we'll come up with <laughs> <and call. laughs> it. I'm so yeah. game. I can Although tape after, off six um, feet. Yeah. After about three or four of them, I don't think we'll know what six feet is. And that's okay. Because <laughs> that's basically like sanitizer. So we'll it's, just be covered in cells. True. Hashtag not medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? I don't know. Why not? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Well, I guess so sticking with the dark beer theme, the last time we saw you um, was Dark Mode. Yeah. Uh, Walltown Beer Festival. How was that for you? Because uh, I've, I've had a lot of people ask, especially breweries outside of Tulsa, ask how that went and, you know, kind of what the brewer's take was on that festival. Dude, that festival was so much fun. Thanks. So much, much. fun. <laughs> like, dude, I loved it. So, um, I'm, I'm buddies with Jordan from Welltown, the head brewer. And he texted me, um, it was, it was probably like two months before they were like really getting into planning it. And he was like, Hey dude, we're thinking about doing this dark beer mode fest or dark beer festival. What do you think about that? And I was like, um, you have had my beers, right? Like I don't do dark beers. Um, so <laughs> it sounds fine. Like I'll attend. He's like, dude, you got to do it though. And I was like, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll do, that's why I did that Schwartz beer, like a light 5% black lager that is just so crushable. Um, yeah. Brought the Sugarfoot Stout back. And I had a lot of fun brewing it this time. I say fun, like it's a pain in the ass, but it was still fun brewing it. Um, and then I brought a, a brown ale that I uh, collabed with Cirque Coffee with, and uh, I thought that turned out really well. And so those were like the main beers that I brought. Um, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I'd been at, like hitting them up, like, dude, like, how many beers should I bring? Like, how many kegs should I bring? What are you guys expecting? He was like, I, th- I can't remember what he said. I think they were ex- expecting fifteen hundred to two thousand people, but blew that up, dude. Mm-hmm. Crazy amounts of people came. So much fun, um, and I think it helped that it was a one day thing. You know, their Oktoberfest festival was two days. And maybe this is too inside baseball, but the Friday was just killing it. Everybody wished they would have brought more kegs. Saturday, we sold way more kegs than we did Friday, but it was just like since it was longer, people would trickle in and out. And so with dark mode just being one night, it was bananas like the entire time. It was so much fun. And people brought some amazing beers. I was um, stationed right by Dead Armadillo, so I was just – hanging out with them all, all night, drinking awesome beers. They had like a black IPA that I just love. And I was, I mean, it's dark beer mode. So, or dark mode. So all the, most of the beers are like high ABV. So I'm feeling great, you know, mm-hmm. having a blast, loving everybody. So yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was so much fun. I cannot wait for, for the, for that next year. Yeah. Yeah. A little what did, did you we guys know? think? Yeah. Oh, it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was great. Yeah, it just sucks yeah. our last hurrah, basically. I mean, that I know, was right? Like, for, yeah. for not knowing what to expect with it being different and everything, but it was dark beer, and that's, you know, she had this oh, yeah. out on Pub Talk, and, oh, yeah. and it was good times. Oh, it was awesome. Really good times. <laughs> Two good times. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> just from point, and then I don't know. Then I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. it was fun at the beginning and then it's i don't know yeah. uh my wife tells me i had a good time <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so uh you've talked a little bit about jester king can you talk to us about some of your favorite beers over the past year oh man yeah um that's tough my my favorite local brewery is heirloom um I'm buddies with them, and they just they do some of the best beers in Oklahoma, I believe, and in the country, in my opinion. Um, I'm a fanboy, if you will. But uh, so the, all their stuff that they do has been really good. Um, I had their saison the other day, and it was like they did it with mushrooms, uh, lion's made mushrooms. 
freaking amazing. Um, and then I also love Marshall um, a lot. And they did a collab with um, with Heirloom, and it was awesome. Uh, it, and they did that on their cask. It was really, it was a really cool like beer experience. Um, but um, I'm trying to think of my favorite, my like absolute favorite beers of this year. Hmm. I need to try Jester King. I, Dude, Jester King's awesome. I saw that at Collins, you were talking about them, Midtown Liquor earlier. They've started getting that in too. And I've yeah. looked at it every time and I'm just like, oh, I don't know what to get from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like their beers are weird, um, but they're just so unique you know like you know a lot of other breweries are doing similar stuff now but they were like one of the og in my opinion or my beer you know knowledge yeah. uh one of the og like local local-ish you know in our part of the united states that were doing just really out there cool stuff um and just really really staying true to themselves you know um and so, like doing their like all well water and their their uh, local yeast or whatever, you know. So, like all their house culture stuff, like just really really cool. Um, but God, I'm, now I'm I'm just trying to think of my favorite beers of the of the year so far. I mean, it's it's only April, but I would probably say that um, that heirloom uh, oak aged pills has been it's probably been my favorite of the year, and I, I make. I make I've made a couple posts about it on my stories, um, Rapture stories that like that beer is just it's awesome. It's a great beer. I'm so glad that that they did that. It's a it's a really cool beer. You said you don't know the name of that one, right? I can't even remember the name. I'm so bad at names. What up there? See what they have right now to see what. Yeah, let me see what it's called because it's it's the one that they have in four packs right now. Um, it's they also do weird names, but who am I to talk? I do a lot of weird names. Until you do the uh, paragraph descriptions, you're not there. <laughs> yeah, they, they, <laughs> my descriptions are are pretty uh, chill, uh, but my names are always nobody really knows what's going on with my names. But they always have a purpose. I will say that. Um, let me see here. It's called White Caps. Ah. Oh shit! How the hell did I? I've had that beer a million that times. Beer is fucking awesome. That yeah. beer is fantastic. So that was not on their current menu for like pickup because I was looking at their menu for pickup. Is it, is it one of those? No, that one's fucking awesome, dude. That beer is fantastic, man. Um, love it. I've I've probably had twenty of those cans in the last like three weeks. It yeah. might not that might not sound insane, but I mean it's you know those are four packs, so you know it's pricey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I mean a lot of the times that I'm. Uh, like having beers, it's like I'm drinking my own. Um, so I don't know. And I, I, I drink a lot of whiskey too. So I, I love bourbon. Um, I drink a lot of that and wine. I drink a lot of wine. There's a theme going on with these Skype episodes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I need to catch up because I, I was listening to uh, your uh, pod with uh, Malty. And, uh, <laughs> but that was a long pod. Yep. It's a, yep. I'm like I've got like 30 minutes left. Oh uh, yeah, it was long that made it. There was another three hours after that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <more> fixed in. <laughs> it's insane. It's so crazy. I love it. I think uh, he's pretty proud of that too. Like it's a it's a record, and I think he I think he's wearing that as a badge of honor. He should, as he should. <laughs> it's special. <laughs> Especially okay. sloppy. Yes. Um, That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> So, have you have you come across any fun suggestions or anything maybe for people that are stuck at home uh, during all this COVID Corona craziness? Man, uh, no, I'm just okay. Kidding. So, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> well, I was like, nope. Me I either. Just, next, yeah. <laughs> dude. So I saw um, I saw this video. It cracked me up of people that were like social distancing, obviously, and they did like a Skype or a uh, Google chat or I don't know what it's called the Google hangout and there was like four ro- or uh, two rows of four people and they played flip cup and it oh was God. amazing cracked me up I was like dude I need eight or seven friends so I can do that because <laughs> I only have a few but hey I will call you guys <laughs> 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 
<laughs> There's two. <laughs> yeah. We only got a few more. Yeah. We can do it. Don't Man. look ready. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. We can get we can get Joe. You know, there's four. That'll make make a ten hour episode. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> be awesome. <laughs> My phone shut off. Sorry. Oh, dude. No, it's okay. Let That's me, what let me put you guys on the spot real quick. So, okay. what what's been your favorite beers the past? Couple months. I have to pull up Untapped real quick. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I stopped doing Untapped, so it's hard for me to remember. I mean, that's why I do Untapped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I wish I could remember to put the beers in Untapped because my memory already stuck. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I literally put it on my home screen so I'd remember to do it so that I could go, oh, I had that the other day. Oh, yeah. Uh, man, you know, not just because you're on and not just recency bias, but. I'm going to throw out Pineapple Promise oh, and yeah. uh, so That's awesome. Uh, and I, me and the wife both just crushing crawlers of those over the weekend. That's great. Dude, uh, I love it. And then uh, I'm going to look at my untapped too. I've, I've been killing a lot of Marshall, This Land Lager, and Dunkel just because they're easy drinkers. Dude, easy, yeah. easy to get, which right now, I mean, like half of the battle is like, uh, how can I get this without it being like a, a whole ordeal? Oh, yeah. um, you know, uh, nothing's left, and their strawberry blonde is another one I've been crushing. Oh, that's a great beer, yeah. Um, yeah DDH Champions was awesome from Skydance. Oh, yeah. Down there, that was a really good one. Man, I haven't had any of their beers yet. But their IPAs are fucking amazing. Yeah. Good stuff. I've got to try those. Got to try them. Well, he was supposed to have a tasting in town, and then... Oh really? Yeah. Corona. Corona. Yeah. It's just it's just ruining everything. Yeah. That Bruce Lee from fucking Stone Cloud, I probably I know I talked about it last week and I probably did it more even drunk afterwards. Uh Bruce Lee is awesome. They're they're double IPA. And Stone yeah. Cloud's doing great stuff. Chug Norris too. Yeah. Well even that by lady uh Rosa Goza or whatever that uh Kelsey brought us a couple weeks back, that was really good. Yeah, I, there's just a lot of good beer being made around here. They have yeah, a big oh. variety. Yeah. After we did that episode with Matt last week, apparently I still was coherent enough to take a picture of the beers I drank during the show, and it was like it was eight different beers. So <laughs> variety, which is, is one thing, but then it's like you're not really. Well, maybe you're savoring the last three that you're drinking, but maybe. You know. Yeah. Why not? Well, yeah. That. That one might not have gone five hours, but I was just as toasted at the end of that. <laughs> yeah. We chugged that one. Thing on everyone? Uh, quarantine beer chugs. That's what we're doing. I mean, why not? Are you guys in that group on Facebook? Yes. Oh. Isn't it a shit show? It's, it's a shit show. It's I, don't understand. I drank a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of liquor everything but just chugging a bottle of crown or something which i probably did i but it hurt and those people are just oh, drinking it like it's fucking nothing i'm like no. i can't it's not I'm that bad yet I mean, it's not that bad and if i was chugging liquor back in the day i had already it was at the end of the night i'm not starting my day off with i'm gonna chug this bottle of crown yeah no Good morning I'm, everyone i'm gonna call bullshit on that michael but i do <laughs> <laughs> I distinctly remember a night where <laughs> you and I split one of those gallons of Cuervo. Oh, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying we didn't do it. I'm just saying okay. we a day with it. It's not like 11 o'clock in the morning. Let's pop this bottle of fucking crown and get it going. No, it was probably about 7, 8 o'clock, and then we hung out until 5 o'clock in the morning. But... We were responsible. It was the evening. <laughs> yeah. After my fucking breakfast, like these people are doing in that group. Dude, those people are insane. But we weren't under quarantine. If we were under quarantine back in those days, totally different. Yep. Yep. Totally different. Sorry, I gotta see my uh, having an issue with my charging. I cannot die. I do not want my computer to die. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be devastating. Fun. So, do we okay, just, here we go. Did we just did we just set up that we're gonna challenge every guest to chug a beer on an episode? 
think that's what just happened. We're not doing it. We don't do it right now because we have lightning right. around everything. But yeah, to end the show probably. Well, then I'm I'm just gonna hold on to this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get a, I'll get my favorite beer of the last of the past year, and I'll I'll chug one of them. Which beer is Damn. that? You know, that's a big ass mug. Yeah, I might go get a different beer actually. Here <laughs> yeah, what is what is that beer in that mug? Uh, it's actually Wild Town's All American Denim. Oh, that's that's a good chug beer. Come on. Exactly. Dude. Yeah, but uh, that's about a beer and a half. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I put two cans in there. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's lazy. An I chug. I Maybe I'll just drink some of it down, and then yeah. Anyway, we'll figure it out. We should have ch- well I'll chugged the bottle of this Peter beer. No, last, oh God, last week was bad enough. <laughs> what did you guys chug last week? I mean, I'll, I'm asking for spoilers. I had a, it was 405's Vocal Fry, it's an experimental yeah. IPA they're doing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I did Chug Norris from Stone Cloud. Oh, nice. And Matt had the uh, Breakaway from Dead Armadillo. Oh, nice, yeah. Solid. <sighs> That fucking video. <laughs> I watched that. I'm like, oh wow, we weren't drunk at that point. <laughs> Damn it, I the hat off my head. <laughs> oh god. Good times. That's amazing. So should we but, jump into lightning round or I I think lightning round's next. Let's do it. Have you made it to lightning round in the Joe episode? Uh I've made it to lightning round. I I remember lightning round of core four. That might have been the last yeah. one. That I listened yeah, to. that's where we got the idea. Yeah, yeah okay. We're thieves. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> thieves that give credit. Shout out yeah. to Matt. That works. I love that we're also using the same glass, Jeremy. It's great. I know. It's one of my this favorite is, glasses, honestly. I love this glass. Uh, yeah. Holds a shitload of beer. Mm-hmm. That, I think, that one. You didn't? I'm still stuck with the original that I still love. The OG. Oh, I've got that, too. Yeah. But that one yeah, I like, like this one. Uh, uh, it's awesome. Yeah, I actually. So I, I have, I had three of these glasses, and I have two at the house, and then one at the farm, and then I broke the one at the farm. Oh no, dude, I was devastated. Yeah, because that was like my picture glass. Like right. if you look at my Instagram, it's like the only one I use. Yeah. Well, so I see like, a pop up when Jeremy does posts or on the story show. I'm like, fuck. I'm <laughs> It's not on my glass. Yeah. It's a good glass. Well, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, speaking of stealing things, whenever we go to make new glasses, it's probably going to be that style. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't that expensive either. Like, really. Oh, lightning around. That's right. <laughs> what are we doing? You and your eight point saison. All right, bro. <laughs> Had to do it. <laughs> so, uh, the first one. IPA or stout? IPA, obviously. Fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) We did kind of already get that answer earlier. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Summer or winter? Winter. That's that's been universal so far. Really? Yeah. Dude, which is funny, like, coming for me as a farmhouse brewery, you'd think I would say summer, but... I just love the winter time. I just, love the winter time when I'm used to it. Yeah, it's awesome. Just being Oklahoma, I would think the summer would get more love because of lakes and all that shit. Yeah, like, which I love it. I, I love it. But yeah, I love winter time, man. Right on. Uh, pizza or burger? Pizza. Damn straight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cans or jugs? Cans. Okay. Gotta go with the cans. Come on. <laughs> uh, porter or Pale L? Pale L. I think we knew that one too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one was. Uh, that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> GIF or JIF? JIF. Oh, my God. Dude, I'm a JIF guy. I've been saying that from like the very moment that I saw the word JIF. I'm gonna close this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm, I mean, I might change. It might be a Chesade Cesar situation. Uh-huh. I may start switching because I only hear GIF. But I'm staying, I'm staying true to my GIF. 
Uh, Citra or Sabro? Citra or Sabro? Yeah. Citra. Nice. Uh, this is this is important. Boomer or Go Pokes? Boomer. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Oh. No. I'm sorry. Here's the deal. Uh, let me let me talk about this for a second. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I did not go to either. So I don't have like actual ties. But yeah. growing up, I was Boomer sooner because of Adrian Peterson, obviously. He's my boy. Hey. AD baby, amazing. Yeah. Um, and then he went to the Vikings. I don't. I mean, I don't like the Vikings, but I love him. I'm a yeah. Steeler fan personally. Um, so, but I've always loved AD. And then I had a friend. This is going to be very controversial. So I don't know if you guys need to put some type of warning or something. Or uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, a buddy of mine, I have two buddies that played at OU. Well, I have a few, but two that like people actually know. One was Tress Way, who is the punter for the Redskins now. Yeah. Great dude. Amazing dude. Uh, and, the Redskins, but okay. Right, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, nobody <laughs> likes the Redskins. Come on. <laughs> but the other guy I know is Landry Jones. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Very controversial. Is it? I mean... It is. Because, dude, I, like, stopped liking college football because I knew Landry, and all of my OU friends were like, he's the worst quarterback of all time, he's so terrible, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, hey, he's really nice, and he's actually pretty good at football, so let's relax a little bit. I know we just had Sam Bradford, but let's chill, all right? He's doing fine. But isn't that... I mean, I'm just going to say this. That's half of my issue with the OU fan base is like yeah. jumping to conclusions and, yeah. you know, if it's not a perfect season, then what's this guy even doing? It's, that's real. That's real. Is, that the, is he in the XFL now? Yeah. He, well, yeah. Yeah. Dallas Renegades, dude. I can go get my jersey if I need to. <laughs> and put it on. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. I have to do it for the chug. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I went, I went to the last. Um, Dallas Renegades game. Oh, sh- awesome! Yeah. Where do they play those at? Where, where do the Where do they play? Globe Life Park, uh, the old Rangers Stadium. It was amazing. Like I don't know if you guys watched the XFL, but it I was this weekend. So much fun! Like amazing, amazing. Mm-hmm. Filling that with what was the, the arena football was a big thing for a little yeah. bit there too. We even yeah. went to a little game here I think in Tulsa. Yeah, we went to several here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and dude, XFL is amazing. Awesome now. Okay. Any, uh, liquor or wine? Ooh, wine. What the? Man, you're all anti Mr. Popular vote. You fuck all the problems. Really? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Uh, somebody's got to do it, or there's no point in answering these questions, right? <laughs> Especially with fans who were big on bourbon earlier, too. Dude, that's like, the thing. I. Yeah, I love bourbon. Like, I, I, I will show you guys my collection later. Um, but me and the wife, we crush wine. Like, oh. love wine. And we, wine? so my wife, wine. oh man. So we like Spanish wine. My wife is Spanish. Okay. And so there's like a, a few that we buy at like pretty much on a weekly basis at Ranch Acres. And that's like, those are our wines. Um, I love reds. Reds are my favorite. Summertime, I do like whites, but I love I love reds. I love like cabs and stuff. But yeah, I couldn't tell you the names. No. Um, my wife could. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know I like Pinot Wine Podcast. Damn it! That's about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, last one. Uh, traditional or experimental? Experimental. Oh, or traditional? I don't know. Ah, God, it's so hard. Exactly. I'll say experimental. Okay. Why? Honestly, I, I got to know why. You'd feel traditional. You, you love Marshall and yeah. the, and this your styles. So here's the thing. I love tradition. I mean, like, look, so look at our two bottle releases that we've had. Yeah. One is the most traditional you can be is like one of the most ancient recipes, the Chessade, Spelt Saison. 
And then you have the chrome yellow, which is like this crazy mixed culture. What What is this? I love it, but what is this? So I I love traditional, but I feel weird trying to be super traditional. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I think it's it's fun for me to be more experimental because if I'm doing traditional stuff, I'm just going to compare myself to – the people that have been doing it for so long and just cr- like I'll, I'll compare myself to Blougies or, um, or, uh, um, Oh my God, I can't even think, uh, Cezanne <laughs> DuPont. Oh my God. I was like, what is that Cezanne that we don't get anymore in Oklahoma? Cezanne DuPont. Like I'll just compare myself to Blougies or Cezanne DuPont or even here in, uh, in the United States, like Hill Farm Center or something like they do the most amazing farmhouse beers you'll ever have. And so for experimental, you know, it kind of gives me a little bit more room to work. So that I'll say experimental. That's All right. It. I've got I've got to ask real quick though because I've seen this the term a lot and maybe our listeners are wondering the same thing but your 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 chrome yellow yes. on the bottle it says mixed culture fermentation. Yeah. It lists all the different things on here. What what is a mixed culture fermentation? What Talk, talk to us a little about that. Yeah, so mixed culture fermentation. Um, it's so the typical yeast that you'll have that the typical brewers yeast is called Saccharomyces yeast. Okay. So that's you know all your IPAs, your lagers. Um, like some some are bottom fermenting, some are top fermenting. It all depends on the temperature that you ferment at. Um, but for mixed culture um, beers, you have Brettanomyces, um, Lactobacillus. Um, pediococcus, all these different yeasts and bacterias. So for my mixed culture chrome yellow, it uses Britannomyces, Lactobacillus, and Saccharomyces. So it's like a mixed, you know, yeast. I'm trying to find the right words to explain this. I just dominated this Peter beer, so it's kind of hard to talk about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like I, I utilize three different yeasts. Um, like the Brett, Lacto, and Saccharomyces, and they're all mixed together. And I do a primary ferment with all of those. A lot of people, they'll do like a Saccharomyces ferment, and then they'll transfer it to another vessel, whether it be a barrel or something, and then they'll throw bread in there, uh, Brettanomyces in there, uh, or they'll bottle it with Brettanomyces or something like that. Just to, like I think that's what uh, Boulevard does with their Saison Brett series. And... Um, and so all the sour beers, like the um, the Soul series and the Promise series that we do, that's strictly um, lactobacillus um, that I ferment, or I don't ferment because it's a bacteria. Um, I'll let that sit for a day, and then I'll throw my Saccharomyces yeast, which is a it's a saison yeast. And so it, the lactobacillus is what makes it sour, and then I throw my Saccharomyces yeast in there, and that's what actually ferments the uh, sugars in there. So yeah, mix, mixed culture saison means I'm using different bacteria and yeast all together to work as one. So on the bottle, it talks about the drinking experience and changing over time because yeah. of that different stuff. Is it something that you should age or just drink? That's the, or? Yeah, that's the fun thing about those beers. So Chrome Yellow, I bottled that beer in December. And with those wild yeasts in there, with the Britannomyces partic- in particular in there, that yeast just will will change how that beer tastes over the years. And that's also why I like to cork my beers so you can age them on the side. They don't get oxidized or anything like that. And over time, that yeast will just keep doing crazy things in the bottle and it'll be to- a totally different drinking experience later on. So have you guys had any Lambic before? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I love Lambic beers. Um, Tilquin is is my favorite Lambic brewery, um, I would say. I mean, I love Cantillon and stuff like that, but I just love what Tilquin does. And I'm probably not even saying their name right, but I'll just go with it. Uh, and my dog is barking in the background. I apologize. <laughs> She's yeah. killing the dance. So, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. so um, what's fun about their beers is they're all wild um, capture or cultures. So they will put their uh, wart in a cool ship and let the wild bacteria and yeast inoculate the wart, and then they'll throw it in barrels or throw it in whatever vessels they use, and then they blend it and put it in a bottle, 
and then that beer will change for 20 years. I mean, I've I've had I had a uh, it was a 2011 and 12 blend of uh, from Tilkwin. It was a goose, so there's no fruit added, and I, I had it um, last year. So that beer was close to 10 years old, and it was one of the best beers I've ever had in my entire life. Like if if you age it correctly, like that beer will just just go crazy. And so that's why a lot of people in these crazy trade groups will trade for really old Cantillon or, you know, crazy Lambic beers, um, goose beers. And, uh, and yeah, it's a really cool experience. So I have a beer coming up that is, it's a Saison blend that I did that it was a hundred percent Britannomyces, um, that was, um, grown from a Lambic brewery. They never really said what brewery it was, um, I would assume that it's Cantillon. I could be wrong, um, but it's just their yeast. So I did that and I aged it, or I let it go for a few months. Um, and that beer was wild, like so wild. I smelled it. It smelled like crazy stone fruit with this just funkiness. I can't, I can't even put a, a finger on what the smell was. It was insane. But it was like really, really fruity, and I did not add any fruit to it. Um, but then whenever you taste it, it's like this really crazy experience. Um, like uh, not like super astringent. I'm trying to think of the right word that it would be. Um, just really unique. Uh, and I, I uh, Jake Miller from uh, Heirloom came to the came to Rapture the other day because uh, you know breweries we're we're bros with each other. You know like. I ha I use Unikegs, um, which are these plastic kegs, and he um, was needing some because he was about to send some to Seattle or something. And he was like, "Hey, would you mind if I bought a couple kegs off?" He was like, "That's cool." So he came up, and he does a lot of wild culture beers. And I was like, "Dude, I have this beer. It's bananas, and I need you to taste it because I cannot put my finger on what this is." And so he tried it. He was like, man, this tastes like just a super wild ferment beer that's just a little young. That just needs some more time. He's like, if I were you, I would brew a Saison, like a clean Saison with Saccharomyces yeast, and then blend the two. That's what I would do. It's like, okay, I like that idea. Because I've blended before, but I honestly never really thought about blending that beer because – my dream for that beer was just to be like, yo, this is a 100% Brett um, fermented beer. It's going to be blow your mind because it's so crazy. You might hate it. You might love it. We don't know. Um, and this is, this is just what we're going to release. But he was like, man, if I were you, I would just blend it um, with a really like more clean Saison um, that's really young. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to try that. And so then a few weeks ago, I, um, I brewed a Saison with uh, rye, um, with pale wheat and pills, and um, brewed it. We, I don't really measure IBUs too much, but it was it was probably like a 40 IBU. The Brett beer that I did, it was all made with age tops, so zero IBUs. Um, and this one is like a the traditional, more traditional saison that I brewed. It was about you know 40 IBUs or so, 35, 40, I would guess. It might be 60, it might be 10. I don't know. But I would guess it was around that. And so um, my brew system, you guys know this, but listeners might not. So I'm going way too deep. God, I've had too much beer. No, I'm, I'll great. talk about this for hours. Great. <laughs> so, also, um, she said. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, I brewed that traditional Saison, tried it. Now, I, I almost was like, man, I just want to bottle this. Saison because it is so good. I would I would crush this uh, at the farm all day long. So I will brew that again, and it'll be fun to talk about. But um, I was messing with different blends like percentages, and I figured out I wanted to blend about sixty five percent of the super wild saison with thirty five percent of the more traditional saison, and I tried a bottle. It, way too prematurely like it's nowhere near ready or i wouldn't say nowhere near it's it's just not ready yet and man it is so unique really really, really cool experience and that's another example of a beer that is just going to change like crazy over time 
and I did three different blends of it. Um, the first two are really similar, right around that 65, 35 split. And then the other one is more of a blend of the traditional Saison. And I also fermented with Rourke Acres honey. So it'll be a little bit different. And the reason why I did that is because I ran out of sugar. So I was like, <laughs> I need something else. Yeah. And also, you know, the way that I look at our stuff, it's like, we're a farm. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to do whatever I can. You know, I, whenever we were first starting, I almost just bought a bunch of different styles of bottles, whether they're 12 ounce, whether they're 750 milliliter, the brown, green, whatever, whatever like style ball they are. And I almost just filled them all and just said, whatever, like we'll sell them all for different prices, you know, like based on the quantity or the ounces in the bottle, but who cares? Like we're a farm. We're going to yeah. do whatever, whatever we have and just make do. So that's, that's why I did that with the honey. And also I'm really excited about that. That blend three is going to be really cool. So I have some, some kegs of each, each blend um, and bottles of each blend. The first blend, I have more bottles. Um, second blend, it's like, it was a pretty even split of kegs and bottles. And then the third blend is mainly kegs. And I really wish I would have bottled a lot more because I think that blend is going to be really, really cool. Right. Yeah, I just talked way too long. <laughs> no, I, I had to get I to, love I, hearing all the details about this stuff. It's fucking awesome. Like and like we talked about during our first interview, we got to try um one of your beers that kind of probably in line with what we're doing now, trying different versions of the, the Saison and like experiment yeah. stuff. And hopefully one day we get to talk to Jake because we would love to have him on the show with with all that. He's stuff. amazing. Um lost track of where i was going with that oh you're good <laughs> yeah that uh, says has gone so <laughs> yeah. like I started damn it peter this, <laughs> atlas i'm just like i'm gonna start bringing this too Fuck it. but it's cool to hear about just the mixed cultural thing has been just crazy to me i didn't i didn't understand me but it's cool to look at how things change over time like like that it's good to hit, get some behind the scenes yeah it's fun man and honestly i'm probably not even explaining it that well um, because me, you know, that Peter beard just like whooping me, but I'll have to be on um, another time without any beer in my system, and I will explain to you all the processes. You know, mm -hmm. we don't dare not no beers. Yeah. In our that's true. That's not <laughs> yeah. You got to go for the goal of what is it four now? Four is the the high score for pub talk. People will be in on on our show. Yeah, yeah. Matt set the record last week. Yeah. <laughs> Can you yeah. Fucking cool ship to me, because oh that's... yeah, yeah. Do you want this to be on the pod, or do you want this to be like just between us? I don't know what. Do you know what a cool ship is, Jeremy? Yeah. Well, I, I almost asked earlier, and then I kind of stopped myself because I was like, "That's a American slayer question." But I don't. But is it something you would use if you had the opportunity to be able? Yeah, to Yeah, if I had the opportunity, and I will use cool brew? ships. You will yeah. use a cool ship. Yes. I'm curious as fuck about that, to be honest. Yeah, I'll tell you. So um, with Cool Ships, it's kind of what I talked about with Lambic Brewers and with Goose. So what they do is they brew the beer, okay? It's really hot after the boil. They throw it in this big tub, basically, um, which is called a Cool Ship. And then they, they throw the wort in there. It's piping hot. They let it sit overnight to cool down naturally. And then all this wild yeast and bacteria inoculates the wort and then they use all that wild yeast and bacteria to ferment the beer so the next morning they'll throw that wort that is now cooled and has all that inoculant in it they'll throw it in fermenters or oak barrels or whatever whatever it may be and let it ferment that way so they don't actually pitch yeast okay. um, which can be really scary at the same time because you don't know what kind of bacteria you're getting you know it yeah. could completely mess the beer up you know, but you get some really unique beer. That's what all goose is. Is, is there any way to have any, like, so you say you like using a cool ship on a certain beer that you make. Is there any way to ensure that you're always getting that same thing then? Or, do you, or is your goal to be di for it to be something different every time? It's impossible to get the same exact beer, okay. which is what makes it so cool, which is why experimental is awesome. Yeah, fuck yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's I like it. Okay. Yeah, because you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. You know? 
Damn it, I'm going to have to watch Forrest Gump now. <laughs> Demolition Man. Shit dude. happens. Yeah. yeah, dude, which is why Goose is like some of my favorite beer that I've had. It's because... So that's the different. proper way to... What beer are you pronouncing right now? Goose, not, oh. not Goza. Uh, G-U-E-Z-E. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, like Tilquin or Cantillon or... Um, trying to think of the ones that distribute here all from belgium it's like uh it's like champagne it has to be from france like a certain region in french Fran- french it's france france french 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 but like if you are a lambic brewer in belgium then your beer is considered goose or lambic. Um, but if, if, so cool ship truck, that's all they put in a cool ship, which is like a big open thing, and let that wild yeast inoculate it. But they cannot call that lambic because they're in Oklahoma. They're not in Belgium. So, and so that's why um, Jester King created this thing called Method Goose. Um, I don't know. You've probably seen their like insignia on certain things, but it's like that method, but it's not technically goose because it's not in Belgium. Okay. That sounds like a different fucking podcast series that we need we to can do. We do it, man. One of these days, we're just going to have a beer history podcast with like beer six of these little podcast. windows on here. Let's do it. Everyone's getting used to how to do it now. <laughs> It'll be easy. Oh, yeah. Us. Love hearing yeah. that. Okay. So we well, since this might go down for like a year and a half, we've got to have That's it all fine. lined up. Yeah, we got to do it. A year and a half. Oh, Christ. <laughs> down. Are we chugging a beer? I think we are. Let's do it. Right. Yeah, let's we'll do it. Beer chugs, and then we'll let's yeah. let's finish up the actual podcast episode, and then we can hang. That's how okay. normal episodes go. Anyway, we just hang out at the brewery for hours afterwards. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. So. What's going uh, on? I think we're going to chug another beer because that's life that's with the it. corona. So, so I've, got another, I've got another um, All American Denim from Walltown. Michael's got an Atlas IPA from Marshall. One of my of theirs. I've got that that heirloom that I have like uh, 50 million cans of. So White Caps. Got to, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Now I know the name. Yeah. White Caps. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I'm going to let you pour that before I cheer. Hey, I'm still coherent while we're doing this. Hey, now. That's about to change. (laughs) (laughs) Just let you know. Cheers, guys. All right, cheers, y'all. Yes. Good stuff. I haven't chugged a beer in a minute. I, do I haven't in a week. week. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all over that Facebook group. Uh, before last week, I had not done it in years, but. No, last week with Matt was the first time I chugged one. Well, no, I chugged one at that beer festival that got uh, Jason from Tubbs. Oh, yeah. Yep. Tubbs, yep. Oh, yeah. I remember that at uh, Wilbur. Well, chug it. Yeah. Guess I have to. Yep. Chugs. Mitch, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Absolutely. Always, yeah. a, pl- always a pleasure. Um, stay safe and healthy and whatnot. Yes, I'm trying. Throw no away. Wash them hands. Wash them hands all the time. Sanitizer as much as I can. Don't eat that. Well, okay, don't tell me what to do, all right? <laughs> Still America. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Free for a reason, okay? I'm going to eat some hats. <laughs> That guy says, don't let the door hit in the vagina on the way out. (laughs) That was hilarious. That's going to do it for another episode of Pub Talk. Thanks so much to Mitch for coming on and talking to us today. Make sure to follow Rapture uh, on social media. Uh, Instagram is at Rapture Ales. Uh, Facebook, just search Rapture Brewing. Um, And make sure to pick up their beer whenever you have the chance. Check out the delivery options. Uh, You know, look for it once we're able to go to restaurants on tap and uh, whatnot. And uh, make sure to follow us on social media at Pub Talk Podcast. Visit our website, pubtalkpodcast.com. 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode either on your favorite podcast platform or YouTube to get the video version. And uh, yeah, everybody stay safe and wash your damn hands. And as always, never forget there's nothing in life too big or hard. You can't handle it over a few beers with your good friends. And until next time, just chill till the next episode.